We are back now on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast to discuss one of the more entertaining games of Week 5 thus far. That being, as you guys saw there on your screen, the Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. The first AFC North contest so far of the early season did not disappoint at all. Um, This matchup between the Ravens and the Bengals, we kind of hyped it up. Uh, last week when we previewed it a little bit just because of the implement implications of both you know scenarios if either team lost obviously and um, you know Baltimore took advantage I thought of some crucial errors by the uh, by the Bengals in this game to win 41 to 38 in overtime now the Ravens like I mentioned before in the last segment are first in the AFC North with a three and two record and the Bengals in the AFC North as well, obviously fall to one and four, along with the Cleveland Browns in last place after this contest. And looking at both of the performances, I think to me, none to stand out more than these two guys, right? Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow. Lamar, an outstanding game. You know, it had pretty much everything. He was making the throws, running with the ball, obviously, how he complimented uh, Derrick Henry, and as well, just making the the crazy wow throws, right? You're going to see it everywhere for the next couple of days. The the touchdown that he had to Isaiah Likely, it was it was insane, quite honestly. Um, when you hear everybody talk about how quarterbacks should should never do what Lamar did, basically in that in that scenario, and for him to execute it perfectly and create a touchdown out of it, in which they needed to, um, it was insane. It was great to see. Lamar Jackson performed like that, 348 yards, four touchdowns on uh, 26 of 42. He also added on 55 rushing yards. Then you look at every, all the other players on the Ravens, Derrick Henry, 15 carries for 92 yards and a touchdown. Zay Flowers had a good game, seven receptions for 111 yards. And you had other guys step up like Kohler, Bateman, and Isaiah Likely. Um, all score touchdowns as well. Isaiah likely actually scored two. So a lot of offense in this game, obviously, right? And then you look at the other side and Joe Burrow right there, if not a little bit just based on the numbers, outperforming Lamar Jackson with a 30 for 39 day, 392 yards, five touchdowns, and an interception as well. You look at his receivers, the, uh, the epitome of what we thought we'd get out of Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Jamar Chase, 10 receptions. 193 yards and two touchdowns, while T. Higgins, nine receptions, 83 yards, and two touchdowns as well. Crazy numbers in this game. Madden-like numbers in this game. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't catch the entirety of it. I had to go back and watch the uh, the the bigger the bigger parts of this game. And you look at some of the the moments that transpired in this game. Obviously, you look at first. In that first half, the action was all over the place right from the start for both offenses. Cincinnati were actually leading at the half 17-14. to And uh, there wasn't too much contribution from the running game. I didn't include too much of that other than Derrick Henry, obviously, because he had big moments. But there wasn't too much from the running game, from Zach Moss or Chase Brown, really that much. Um, because the passing game was just off the charts with both of these guys. They were as close to perfect right no, no neither of the guys were giving up anything right they were hitting on every throw they were making every play what was going to give for there to be any sort of difference in this game that one team or the other could take advantage of and then we got to the second half right and uh, there were six touchdowns just in the second half back and forth right from the start of the half it was Bengals score Ravens Bengals Ravens it was it was great it was great to see and while Cincinnati at one point, I think they were leading by uh, by three points. Yeah, they were leading 38-35. to 35. They were on their drive to try and ice the game there towards the end. And, um, you know, Joe Burrow making one of the crucial mistakes, I think, of this game. Throws that interception to Marlon Humphrey. Trying to get it to Jamar Chase. Um, it was a slant route, I believe. And I think Marlon just kind of jumped it, stepped in front of it. And, you know, that was the moment. That was the moment where, you know, maybe you think you overdid it. Maybe you think you threw one to two passes more than you should have, and maybe you try to run out the clock in that instance, but because the pass is working so well, you keep going to it. Jamar Chase looked unstoppable, and that time, Marlon just made a good play, and it is a mistake, though, at the end, because Joe threw the interception, whereas I'm sure a lot of people will say that, you know, running the ball could have been the 
the better option there, but that gave the Ravens life in this game, obviously with three minutes left. Eventually, they kicked a field goal by Justin Tucker to send it into overtime, but even still, you know, when you see that field goal, you're thinking, all right, this coin toss is going to be huge because either the Bengals can sort of try and put out this fire because they had a good drive going other than the fact that Joe threw that interception or the Ravens take a full advantage of this momentum and just go down there and score a touchdown. And what we saw in the in overtime was even crazier, arguably, than what we saw in the game. Baltimore got the ball first, and they were driving um, pretty fast. They were driving pretty fast down the field with, uh, with the first possession of overtime, and there was just that one play, right, where um, a fast snap, I'm not sure if Lamar took his eye off of it or he wasn't expecting it to come that fast or at that time, but he bobbled the snap. It kind of hit off of his chest, and he fumbled it. He fumbled it away, and the the uh, the Bengals recovered it at their 39-yard line. All Cincinnati needed was a field goal um, at that point, right, because it was the second drive of the game, and they got into range as good as they could have, and, you know, this is like so like one in a million sort of scenarios, right? We all saw the field goal, I'm sure, if you tune into this game, how um, it looks at first when you're watching it live, like, like dang, like Evan McPherson um, like missed that badly. That's what I thought. And then you replay it closer and you saw the holder fumble the snap a little bit. He put it down and then it kind of slipped off of, uh, off of his hand. It just kind of slipped to make it go flat. He tried to pick it up again. But by that time, it threw off all the timing and everything like that. And the, the kick just went wide left. So the most unpredictable scenario happens for, for the Bengals, right? You already dodged a bullet um, by recovering that fumble, right? It almost bails out the interception. But then again, you were this close to winning and you get a play like that happening. Completely deflates the, the whole team, the entire atmosphere in that stadium, obviously, right? And then we saw the big run by Derrick Henry, 51-plus yards on that run. They were down at around the 15- to 10-yard line, and all Justin Tucker has to do is just basically chip it into the, the goalpost, and that's the game. That's the game right there, 41-38. to 38. The, the Ravens escape where um, you're thinking they got the ball first, they should win, they fumble it away, now the Bengals are going to win, and then they mess up the kick, and the Ravens you know, get... A miracle to happen and they steal this game and just looking at some of the takeaways from this um it's a harsh loss the Bengals have had a lot of tough losses but this one might be the toughest one just because uh, i go back to that quote that joe burrow said that we talked about when he said that he has to be basically perfect to win this game and he pretty much was right um the way that this ravens defense played against uh josh allen only allowing 10 points you're thinking you know man like they're gonna come in here and really um, put up a better fight, but Joe Burrow, five touchdowns, almost 400 yards, and um, Rams House 99, redraft full PPR stuff, 10, first round, sorry, I'm reading it, uh, uh, I'm reading it in my head, redraft full PPR, SF start 8, 10, man, I have two offers, first, Mahomes, Bijan, Worthy, four, Purdy, Ayuk, Mixon, and the other is Mahomes. Shahid with return yards, Jacoby for Lamar, Andrews Ridley thoughts. Um This is a this is a good tr this is a, a lot. Um for I, I like the first one, honestly. Um Mahomes, Bijan and Worthy for Brock Purdy, Ayuk and Mixon. I I'm a really big fan of Mixon. Um I'm a big fan of Mixon, and it's unfortunate that he has been hurt because the first couple of weeks, I think, he uh, he played very, very well. So um, I really am a fan of him. Not too high on Mahomes, honestly. Um, their offense is just banged up a lot. Bijan, I expected more, and I think you can get more with Ayuk as well. So I, I like the first one, obvious, um, like I said. Eric Fortis, welcome to the show. Need a t-shirt? I would love one too, honestly. Um... Once I get one, maybe you can get one as well. But um, just recapping this game here, saying the last few nuggets here that I have on the Ravens and, and the Bengals. Um, you, you know, it, it's a loss, and the Bengals play as perfect as you would have liked them to. At least Joe Burrow did. But I'm not saying that this loss is on him. But, you know, you go back to that interception, um, that missed field goal. You know, it obviously can't happen, right? But it's weird. 
I think it's really weird how Burrow is in this situation where it's uh it always feels like it's the defense's fault a lot of times with these uh with these losses. Um and now it's the special teams costing him, right? Where the defense did enough to kind of get him in a spot to win the game. Now the special teams can't get it together. Um, and now they're costing them plays or games where Joe Burrow plays a very good game again. And it kind of goes all to waste. But um, it sounds like a cop-out for Joe Burrow, right? Like he can do no wrong. And I'm not trying to say that um, it's never going to be his fault. Because again, he threw that interception, right? Maybe, obviously thinking back on it, he doesn't become that aggressive or throws that pass to, to Jamar. Um, he's not exempt from any sort of criticism or anything like that, but I think it's fair to say that most blame always lies somewhere else where you look at some Cincinnati Bengals fans and they're seeing their quarterback, you know, however way you take it, maybe outperform them more based on the stats. And at home, you're driving to kind of ice the game, and it's always something. It always feels like it's something getting in your own way, and it's unfortunate. Um, obviously, the Bengals are frustrated. Uh, Jamar Chase pretty frustrated um after the game as well in his comments obviously Joe as well um and I just think this kind of stems from really like an over-reliance on Joe Burrow a little bit um because the whole narrative idea of coming into this season where the Bengals was that yo if Joe Burrow stays healthy the entire year they're going to the Super Bowl right I think they overcompensated a little bit there, right? Joe Burrow is amazing to have on there, right? He gives you a great chance to beat anybody in the NFL. We saw it against the Chiefs. We've seen it now against the Ravens. Um, but still, you know, he needs something else. He needs a little bit more help from the defense, allowing less than 30 points maybe that would help. The special teams, right? Like the one thing you, you need to go right and execute it perfectly, you, you fumble the snap there. Obviously, it's not intentional, right? But... Um, he needs a bit more from his supporting cast. You know, Jamar plays a great game. T. Higgins plays a great game. And still, there's always something that gets in their way. So I think that's almost like an over-reliance on Joe Burrow in a sense because just thinking that they have him, maybe they didn't put as much attention on getting another corner opposite of Cam Taylor Britt. Now Dax Hill is hurt, and who are you going to go to now? Um, the defensive line isn't great. The run defense, not that great either. The passing defense, even with those guys there, isn't amazing either. Um, so all these things, I feel like it was just an over-reliance on Joe to think that he's going to be here, so we're just going to be in the conference championship anyway. Why are we going to you know, go overboard and think that we need these many pieces when we've done it before with just Joe? But you know that always can't be the case. The AFC is a super tough conference overall. Now you've got Houston in there. Um the regular teams in there, like the Ravens, obviously the Chiefs, and, and teams like that. So there, there's a lot of good competition. There's a lot of parity in the NFL nowadays. So you definitely need a lot more. And that's one thing that kind of came into my head when I was thinking about this game. But Lamar and the Ravens, you know, what more is there to say? They're looking great, Lamar and Derrick Henry, obviously. But that defense still needs a little bit more work. I think they've uh, I had it down. I'm pretty sure they've allowed like 25-plus points. In, uh, in all their games, or it's the fourth game that they've allowed 25-plus points um, with that defense. So, you know, it's gotten them three wins more than their losses, but that needs to tighten up a little bit more for me to believe that uh, this is really the Ravens team from uh, from uh, last year. So, great game overall, you know. Um, I'm not complaining of what I saw, but still, um, tough one for the, for the Bengals. I kind of feel bad for them. Um, being a Steelers fan, almost feel bad for them, but... Not entirely. Um, but that brings us to our next game that we want to talk about. For as good as a game this was, the Bills and the Texans game was right there with it. We had Josh Allen facing Stephon Diggs again. Two of the best AFC conference teams just in general at 3-1 and one apiece. What was going to give? Ultimately, it ended up being a mistake from the sidelines that I thought costed the Bengals or the uh, the Bills this game. So we're going to talk about that and what transpired in this game as well when we return in just a few seconds. 